Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am announcer for 2022 International Copyright Technology Conference. First of all, I would like to pay our sincere condolences to the victims and their families um, in the accident of uh, Itaewon in Seoul. We would like to take a silent moment for the victims and their bereaved families. Please stand up. Now, please take your seat. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism and co hosted by Korea Copyright Commission and co Korea Copyright Protection Agency, this conference is being preceded with two sessions with the title Technical Challenges for Everyone's Copyright. We will first of all watch the opening video and listen to congratulatory address, opening address and welcoming address. And we will have the Copyright Technology Award Ceremony, which will be followed by keynote address and invitational address. Now we will begin the opening ceremony of 2022 International Copyright Technology Conference. I would like to introduce to you the distinguished guests who came here despite their busy schedule. We will not um, give given uh, applause. First of all, the acting director general from the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism is here with us. We have Mr. Park So Jung, the director at the Department of Knowledge Property Protection Bureau. We have Mr. Choi Byung Gu, the chairperson of Korea Copyright Commission. We have Mr. Park Jung Nyeol, the president of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. And we have the leader of 2022 International Copyright Technology Conference Program Planning Team, that is Professor Shin Yong Tae from Sungshil University. Thank you very much for your presence today. 2022 International Copyright Technology Conference will begin with the introductory video. K-콘텐츠를 특히 저작권 수익이 흑자를 기록하며 문화 강국으로서 저력을 실감할 수 있었습니다. 하지만 K 콘텐츠의 인기가 높아짐에 따라 저작권 침해 사례가 급격히 증가하고 있습니다. 자신만의 개성을 담은 스토리를 콘텐츠로 제작하여 세상과 소통하는 모든 이들에게 올바른 저작물 이용은 저작권자의 권리 보호는 물론이며 더욱 훌륭한 2차 저작물들을 만들어내는 유일한 방법입니다. 저작권자의 권리를 보호하고 저작물의 공정한 이용 활성화를 제공할 수 있는 저작권 기술은 저작권의 대중화를 이끌어갈 수 있습니다. 
올해로 12주년을 맞이한 2022 국제 저작권 기술 콘퍼런스는 저작권 기술의 역할과 중요성을 알리고 국내외 저작권 전문가들을 초청하여 최신 저작권 기술과 이슈들을 논의하고 정책 방향을 고민하는 장으로서 역할을 다하고자 힘써왔습니다. 저작권 대중화를 위한 기술적 도전이라는 주제로 열리는 이번 콘퍼런스는 AI, 웹소설, 음악, NFT 등 우리의 생활 속에 스며든 저작권 기술과 관련된 다양한 분야의 전문가들을 모시고 심도 깊은 논의를 진행하기 위해 11월 2일 포시즌스 호텔 서울에서 개최합니다. 국민 누구나 저작권을 가질 수 있는 현대사회에서 저작권 기술 관련 최신 동향을 파악하고 올바른 발전 방향을 함께 모색할 수 있는 자리로 거듭나겠습니다. 우리 모두를 위한 저작권 저작권 대중화를 위한 2022 국제 저작권 기술 콘퍼런스에 여러분을 초대합니다. 네, 저... So we were able to realize the importance and role of copyright technology through the introductory video of the conference. Now we would like to open the conference with a congratulatory remark from Mr. Chang kyung the Acting Director General from the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. 굿모닝 레이디스 앤 젠틀맨 아이 엠 액팅 디렉터 제너럴 프롬 더 미니스트리 오브 컬처 스포츠 앤 투어리즘 오브 코리아 아이 퍼스트 오브 올 페이 마이 신시어 컨돌레센스 투더 빅템스 앤 브리브 패밀리스 오브 이태원 액시덴트 앤 We are now hosting the 2022 International Copyright Technology Conference. First of all, I would like to thank all distinguished guests who are here with us online and offline. I would like to thank the keynote speaker, Professor Kim Dae-sik from KAIST, Ms. Stella Griffiths, the chairperson of ISO, and I would like to thank other experts from home and abroad for their presentations and discussions. This year, the International Copyright Technology Conference marks the 12th anniversary. This conference has discussed for the last 11 years the AI, big data, cloud, blockchain, and the fifth mobile communication, metaverse, and other latest copyright technologies for Korea to become a powerhouse of content culture in this era. Whenever and wherever we can create content, and such reality is reflected in our content, in our conference. This time, we are going to listen to the opinions and insights of experts today. And we will share our wisdoms and insights on copyright technologies, including AI, web no novel, music, and NFT. I would like to pay my deepest gratitude again to those who prepared for the event. Mr. Che Byung-gyu, the chairperson of Korea Copyright Commission, the president of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, and Professor Shin Yong-tae, and others who prepared for this event. And I would like to congratulate the winners of the award who made contribution to the copyright technology development. I wish all of you good health and happiness. Thank you very much. We are not going to um, give a big hand as the country is under the mourning period. Oh, we now we will hear the opening remark from the chairman of Korea Copyright Commission, Mr. Che byung -gook. Good morning, I'm Che byung gyu Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. I'd like to pay my respect and condolences to the victims and the family, victim family of the Itaewon crowd crush. I'd like to thank all of you who are here with us and those joining us via online for being with us. I'd like to thank 
the copyright agencies, organizations, and associations for their support. I'd like to thank Mr. Chang kyung the Acting General of the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, and Park jong yeol President of Korea Intellectual Property Protection Agency, and Professor Shin Yong Tae at Sungshil University, who is the head of ICOTAC 22 planning team, for their hard work. This year marks the 12th anniversary of the International Copyright Technology Conference. The conference has been a venue where Korean and international copyright technologies and trends are discussed, and we share ideas for the future of the copyright technology industry and direction. The changes in the content industry have been accelerated, and along with the development of digital technology, there has been a transition to a contactless digital society. This facilitates advancement of technologies for digital transformation across the copyright industry, including the publishing, the music, the movie, and the game, and the webtoon sectors. In recent years, one-man media creator, influencers, and other content creators, who are also consumers, have actively generated creative content. The multi-channel network industry has grown and the new types of short forms such as TikTok, Reels, and Shorts has increasingly generated. In addition, the content industry has adopted digital transformation rapidly, which increased the influence of global platforms such as YouTube, Netflix, and Wave. As a result, competition between OTT platforms increased, changing the industrial landscape. NFT is using blockchain technology to assign unique value to digital content that can't be replaceable, which increases value of the content in virtual world like a metaverse and creates economic values. Against this backdrop, the International Copyright Technology Conference 2022 is held to build a foundation where creators, producers, and consumers all enhance their awareness of copyright and fair use of content is ensured. The theme of this year's conference is technical challenges for everyone's copyright. We invited world-renowned experts to hear their insight. Generation and consumption of content is increasing while large distribution platforms have great influence, which results in unfair treatment and issues of a fair share of a profits, copyright protection, and piracy. These all require solutions. The change in the content distribution asks us to work harder to use blockchain, NFT, DID, and AI technologies to address the limit of copyright technologies. With that in mind, the International Copyright Technology Conference 2022 will look into how to better protect copyright holders' rights and how to ensure a fair issue of a copyright at work and discuss copyright technologies to create an effective distribution environment. I hope the conference will help Korea become a country with a cultural influence in the world with K content and help enhance awareness of copyright. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone who worked hard for making this conference possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remark. The chairman delivered a message that we are going to enhance the awareness of the copyright protection. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Park jong yeol the President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, for welcoming address. I am Park jong yeol the President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. First of all, I would like to pay my sincere condolences to the victims of the Itaewon uh, accident. And I would like to 
deliver my sincere gratitude to all participants who are here with us online and offline. Especially, I would like to thank Mr. Chang kyung gun the Acting Director General from the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, and Mr. Choi byung the Chairperson of Korea Copyright Commission, Professor Shin yong tae and experts from home and abroad who will give presentations along with discussion despite their busy schedule. These days, Korean culture is enjoying its heydays. Korean films, dramas, and music received global praise for their excellence. We also hear the news that Korean artists received world-renowned awards often. This is something that we couldn't imagine 10 years ago. In order to continue enjoying such a golden age of Korean culture, we should pay more more attention and make efforts. AI, Metaverse, NFT, and other new technology-based content is now easily available to anyone. As we need to make an agile response to the changing technology landscape, it is timely to select the theme of the conference as technical challenges for everyone's copyright. I hope that today's conference will help you understand new copyright service paradigm and technologies and assess unexpected copyright protection issues, thereby presenting the future of the copyright industries and position Korea as the world's most attractive country of culture. I would like to congratulate and thank the winners of awards for their contribution to the development of copyright technologies. Thank you very much again for all of you, and I wish all of you good health and happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much for your welcoming address. He also delivered the words of congratulations to the award winners and also said this conference will be an opportunity to have better understanding on copyright technology. Now we are going to have an award ceremony for International Copyright Technology Conference 2022. And the awards will be presented to individuals and groups to recognize their contribution to developing copyright technology to protect copyright and increase use. We are now going to give a round of applause to the winners. The first award is Presidential Council on Intellectual Property Chairman Award. The winner is CEO Kang kyung sik of One ID Lab. So I'm going to invite the CEO to the stage. To recognize your contribution to developing copyright technology to protect copyright and increased use, we present you this award. Co-chairperson of a Presidential Council on Intellectual Property, Chong Song Jo. We are going to present the plaque and flower to the winner. And now the winner will take a commemorative photo. Please face the front. Please take a look at the camera right in front of you. Thank you so much. Now you may return to your seat. Next, we will present Minister of Culture, Sports and Tourism Award. Acting Director General of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism will present the award. The winner is Professor Kwak Jin at Aju University. To recognize your contribution to developing copyright 
technology to protect copyright and increase youth in a digital environment, we present you this award. Minister of Culture, Sports, Tourism, Park Bo Gyun. Again, we are going to present the plaque and flower to the winner. Now the acting director general and the winner will take a photo together. Thank you very much. You may return to your seat. And the acting director general will say on the stage for the next award. Next award is WIPO Award. On behalf of the Secretary General of WIPO, Darren Tang, the Acting Director General of the MCST, will present the award. The winner is Chairman of the Korean Music Content Association. So I'm going to invite the chairman of the KMCA to the stage. Certificate Korea Music Content Association. We hereby certify the Korea Music Content Association is awarded the WIPO IP Enterprise Medal. 네, 2022년 11월 2일 세계 지식 재산 기구 사무총장 다렌 탕. Congratulations. And the acting director general is presenting the plaque and flower to the winner. Now they are going to take a commemorative photo. Now you may return to your seat. Next, we will give the award by the Chairperson of Korea Copyright Commission. Mr. Che byung the Chairperson of Korea Copyright Commission, will give the award. The Managing Director, Mr. Yu chan from CC Media Service, please come up on the stage for this award. CC Media Service, Yu chan in recognition of your contribution to the protection and use of copyrights based on the copyright technologies in the digital environment, we give you this award. November 2, 2022, Choi byung congratulations. Please take the award, plaque and flower, and we will take a commemorative photo. Thank you very much. You may go back to your seat now. Lastly, we would like to give the award, which will be given by the President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, Mr. Park jong -yeol. The President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency will give this award to the CEO of BookCube Networks, Mr. Yu Chol Jong. BookCube Networks. In recognition of your contribution to eliminating illegally distributed online content, increasing the awareness of copyright protection, and for developing cultural industries, we give you this award. November 2, 2022, Park jong yeol the President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. Congratulations.
and we will take a commemorative photo. Now please face the camera in front of you. Would you please wait for a moment on the stage? With this, we will conclude the awarding ceremony, and we will take a commemorative group photo all together with the awarders and awardees. Please bring the award and plaque you received and come to the stage. We will take off the mask and take the photo. Please take the award uh, plaque um, to the st stage for the commemorative photo. Uh, could you please open the the award and please uh, take off your mask? Awardees, please uh, stand at the the center of the stage. 네, 마스크를 벗어 주시면 감사합니다. Please take off your mask. 네, 이제 정면에 있는 카메라를 Please face the camera in front of you. Thank you very much for your cooperation. You may now all go back to your seat. And we would like to invite the next speaker, Chairperson Stella Griffith, to explain about identifiers and standards. We will meet her through the video. Good morning, everyone, and hello. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for inviting me to be a guest speaker at ICOTEC 2022. It's a real honor to be presenting to you today and to be included with such an impressive list of experts covering diverse copyright management topics. My only regret is that I cannot be there with you in person. So, alas, this presentation is pre-recorded. I also apologize if my voice sounds a little croaky today. I'm just getting over a cold. Thankfully, it wasn't COVID. Here's a brief agenda of what I plan to cover today. Mostly this will be high level, as I know you have an exciting and packed program, so there will not be time for me to indulge in detail. I will look at how existing standard identifiers can help with copyright management, including recapping some individual use cases. In addition, I also want to give you some early information about two new upcoming identifiers that I think may be of interest and help to your community. First of all, just to introduce myself, I live and work in the UK and have worked in and around publishing and standards for nearly 30 years. I'm executive director at the International ISBN Agency which is the regulatory body for ISBNs. I will mention ISBNs later in this presentation, and I'm sure most of you know already that international standard book numbers, ISBNs, are key supply chain identifiers for books. I'm also currently the chairperson of the ISO subcommittee that looks after standard identifiers in the creative industries. I don't need to remind any of you how important rights are with regard to intellectual property. So this summary slide is much more a reminder for me. For example, as well as documenting and giving appropriate credit, we also need to understand how we can protect property and ensure that the financial benefits arising from monetized products go to their rightful owners. 
So how can standards, and in particular identifiers, help? What exactly is a standard, first of all? A standard is something that documents rules and processes so that you can follow the same steps and get a predictable outcome. It is built on experience and rigorous testing of components, of procedures, of assumptions, and so on and so on. A standard can be applied at any level, from a specific industry to local, national or international levels. Why would you want to follow or implement a standard? What are the benefits? Well, if a group of experts have already carried out experimentation, testing and asked all the hard questions, it means that you don't have to duplicate that effort. You can rely on their earlier work. Standards are with us in all walks of life pharmaceuticals, construction, air transport, etc, etc. Often they are important for safeguarding health and safety. Standards can ensure consistency of quality and reliability, encouraging confidence in customers that a product meets a particular standard. In my opinion, one of the most important benefits arising from standards are that they level the playing field. Producers are encouraged to meet a consistent standard and must then concentrate on developing their own USP or other aspects of their offering to increase market share or gain prominence. I am currently chairperson of an ISO subcommittee <clears throat> but what is ISO? It's an independent NGO that was founded in 1947 purely to develop and publish standards. The name itself, ISO, comes from the Greek word ISOS, which means equal. There are more than 21,000 ISO standards now and 167 national member bodies. So ISO is a key player in world standards. ISO standards are proposed by industry producers and stakeholders, for example, consumer groups. It was book retailers, not publishers, who were the original force behind the development of the ISBN. Once accepted, proposals are developed by groups of experts, and this can take some time. Three years is typical, because ISO incorporates a number of different review stages before a standard can be published. <clears throat> we looked a few slides ago at the general benefits of adopting a standard, and I think that there are some particular benefits if the standard is an ISO standard. ISO standards tend to gain worldwide acceptance and to be regarded as the single solution to particular problems. The particular ISO subcommittee that I'm involved with looks at identification and description. Up to this year, we have published 26 standards and have five more in development. This map shows the countries that are involved in the subcommittee's work. As you can see, Korea is a participant. However, you can also see that certain regions of the world remain underrepresented on our subcommittee. So I'm not denying that there is work to be done there. The subcommittee is involved in a mixture of creative and information management areas. 
And you can see a list of them on this slide. And here are some of the identifiers that are under the umbrella of this committee. I hope that many of them are familiar to you. Today, I'm going to focus on just four of the existing identifiers. The first of these is the ISBN, International Standard Book Number. Well known to you, I'm sure, as the number often barcoded on the back of a book. So hopefully you might be able to see that though. ISBN was the first identifier on the creative scene, developed in the late 1960s at the very dawn of computerization. But it's adapted over time. Not only printed books, but digital and audio books qualify within the scope. Although it's from an analog time, using, for example, technology provided by another identifier, the DOI, the ISBN can be made actionable. Over 2.2 million publishers around the world use ISBN and almost all countries have adopted the standard. Over 250 million ISBNs have been assigned to publications. Each unique publication, change in format, edition, usage constraint and so on, means a separate ISBN is required. ISBN is a supply chain identifier and its purpose by design is not to identify the copyright holder. In fact, its purpose is to identify a particular book in a particular format and edition by a specific publisher who may or may not be the copyright holder. However, ISBN has become ubiquitous in many supporting systems, production, sales tracking, rights and royalties management, to name just a few. It's become the key through which all metadata about a particular book is linked and managed. In fact, if you want your book to be listed and discovered, an ISBN is really a must in order to be accepted in bibliographic databases and on e-tailer sites. Effectively, it enables entry to the market. Pages such as these about books are made possible by ISBN and the rich metadata associated to it. And of course, you will see pages serving other industries built on similar principles and that also heavily rely on using identifiers. I want to focus on just one particular use case for ISBN that comes from the UK. And that use case relates to the public lending right. <clears throat> this has long been established in the UK, although I gather from some research that I undertook for this presentation, there is some controversy about introducing it in Korea. In the UK, PLR was first created as distinct legislation in 1979, not as part of the Copyright Act. In the UK, authors, illustrators, photographers, translators and editors, etc. can register for PLR as long as they can provide an ISBN for their publication and their name appears on the title page. <clears throat> Overall funding for the scheme comes from UK government and sets a level per loan and also a maximum that anyone can receive. A representative sample of public libraries 
provide statistics for all books, audiobooks, and ebooks loaned. Payments are then made to the correct authors, etc., based on the number of loans per ISBN. The PLR scheme helps to encourage diversity of literary and cultural heritage within libraries and particularly supports writers in less commercial genres. Let's move on now to a newer identifier, the DOR, Digital Object Identifier. It's important to clarify that this is a digital identifier for any kind of object. The object itself does not have to be digital. DOIs are permanent and are capable of multiple resolution. <clears throat> As you can see on the slide, Last year, DOI resolutions reached 10.5 billion, with one of the main applications being in cross-reference and citation linking within academic articles. So, for example, clicking on this DOI will take you to this page, <clears throat> where you have the option to read the abstract, download a PDF, made it chargeable, and so on. DOI is applicable across many different types of industry, including movies and TV. One application in that sphere is that of IDA, the Entertainment Identifier Registry. In the last 10 or so years, with the growth of streaming and other services, exponential increases in video content have brought new challenges for metadata management. The top six Hollywood studios were early adopters and funders of IDA, which uses DOI. <clears throat> now, such identifiers are a prerequisite in order to sell video content on streaming platforms such as Netflix and Amazon. For some time, there was also an issue and that there was already another specific ISO identifier in this sphere that was not based on DOI. This is called the ISAM. And this led to confusion between ISAM and IDA. To help improve this situation, now it is possible to make a joint registration and get both an ISAM and IDA. Again, both ISAM and IDA facilitate efficient distribution of movie and TV content across various platforms. ISRC, International Standard Recording Code, is the identifier for sound recordings and music videos of all types, including podcasts. The identifier is permanent for the lifetime of the recording and, like ISBN, is based on uniqueness. Every different version or mix needs to have a separate ISRC in order to be marketed. This is an example ISRC showing its constituent parts. In this particular use case that I'm showing on the slide, the combination of ISRC for the recording and ISWC, the identifier for the musical work, helps to ensure royalties are distributed accurately. In order to sell a recording on Amazon, for example, the ISRC must be quoted or associated. Then, each time music is sold, the copyright fees are paid to the CMO and associated with the ISRC. The CMO looks up the ISRC 
to find the corresponding ISWC that is linked to it and uses that to pass on copyright fees to the correct copyright holders. ISNI, International Standard Name Identifier, is my final example of the existing identifiers. It is the identifier for public personas in creative activities. These can be individuals, e.g. authors, illustrators, film directors, even fictional characters, or organisations, publishers, studios, record labels, and so on. The concept is as a bridging identifier, helping to disambiguate, as well as to provide links and crosswalks between different schemes. Here is an example ISNI entry for a Korean author. As you can see, the entry details the name of the author in different scripts, languages and formulations, but indicates that they relate to the same person. There is a list of the titles in which this author has been involved, so facilitating copyright management. I hope this record is fine, but IS and I are always looking to improve their data. If you are familiar with this author and have any comments on the IS and I entry, I'm sure that IS and I would be glad to hear from you. I hope by these few and brief examples, you can see how different identifiers can bring different kinds of assistance. They can work singly or in combination, a sort of interoperable web of identifiers. The metadata for each identifier can, of course, include other related identifiers, e.g. ISNIs for the author and the publisher imprint, can be included in the metadata associated with an ISBN. All of these help us to find the correct rights holder and their works. And using international standard identifiers demonstrates trustworthiness and reliability. I would now just like to spend the remaining few minutes highlighting current work going on towards developing some new identifiers. You might have thought that the landscape was busy already, but there are definitely gaps and spaces that are not covered. These proposed standards are still in progress, but I think they may be of interest to you. The first of these is called RAID, Research Activity Identifier, and is intended to identify research projects or subprojects. So it's an identifier for the ongoing work rather than the eventual output. However, of course, other identifiers such as DOI, ISBN, which are specifically for the output, be that scholarly articles, monographs, etc., can be included in the RAID metadata, as well as identifiers for the researchers involved. ISNI, ORCID. <clears throat> so RAID is not published yet, but work has been ongoing since 2018, involving 15 experts from nine countries. And you can see the headline progress of this work project on the slide, including the drafts that have been produced and balloted. In fact, 
the text of the standard is ready for publication. So probably you may see it by around the end of this year. <clears throat> International Standard Content Code, the ISCC, is a different approach to identification. In this case, the idea is that the identifier will be derived from the content itself using hash algorithms. The intended scope is broad. Any sort of content that is available digitally, music, text, images. Generating from the content directly will enable deduplication or disambiguation of similar content. Perhaps other applications that could be readily envisioned might be copyright protection, versioning, detecting copyright infringement, and so on. So in principle, I think it could be potentially very useful. Compared to RAID, this standard is not so far down the development road. There have been a number of important decisions about its scope and intention that have taken time, and the road has not always been a straight one. The project started in 2019 and has a lot of good experts, 34 experts from 12 countries. So there really is a lot of interest in this. The first official draft has just been issued for comments. So final publication of this one is unlikely before October 2024. Nevertheless, I think it is an interesting concept and definitely one I think to keep an eye on. Thank you very much again for inviting me to speak here today. It's been an honour and a pleasure to present to you. And I am only sorry that I could not be there in person to see you all. Thank you so much for your attention. Here are my contact details. Please feel free to get in touch. 네, 이렇게 해서 초청 강연까지 함께 만났습니다. Thank you very much for the invitational lecture. With this, we would like to wrap up the opening ceremony. In order to congratulate the success of this conference, many distinguished guests have come here. Thank you very much. Next session will begin at 1.20 p.m. First of all, participants are kindly requested to stay in your seat, then we will provide you with lunch. And the winners of award and distinguished guest uh, VIPs are kindly requested to move to the sixth floor. I will see you after lunch. We will begin the next session at 1.20 p.m.